cultivating guns, how to set up your gun. This is guns from Harbor Freight. They're the cheapest route you can go. Uh, we're gonna go with one that I do not recommend at all and one that I will recommend a lot more and kind of the benefits and more of the drawbacks between everything that we do. And then we have, we'll, we'll show the other one later, but so here we go. This gun right here, I believe, let me give you guys an exact price. So this gun right here was $27.99. This gun right here was $25, right? So we have a $25 gun, which only comes with the gun itself, nothing else. This guy, actually it comes with the cup, I'm sorry. So this gun right here comes gun, cup. This guy right here is a little bit more money, but it does come with a regulator, which helps you if you're learning how to hydro dip or paint itself, this is kind of beneficial. Um, you can do without, I do without, but most people, especially if you're learning, it is good to have this. It's not a make or break thing though, all right? So we're gonna do the quick rundown on the internals of these things, how they break down. And in reality, so this guy right here, we're gonna take this apart and show you the difference between both guns and why I would definitely recommend this guy. So when you take them apart, the actual tips, they look pretty much identical, right? Not much of a difference. If you see this gun right here though, this gun actually has rubber seals here and here. This gun right here doesn't have anything, right? So when we're going to take this apart, This gun obviously comes apart, but you have rubber pieces with it. These pieces right here are extremely weak. They do move and they actually can start to leak. So when you have pieces like this on a gun that's very inexpensive, a lot of oils in the gun brand new as well, a lot of grease because it's the way they're made. So make sure that no matter what you do before you buy any gun, you take it apart and you clean it as best as you can. So right here, piece, piece, right? We're gonna take this back piece apart, which is the part that takes off the needle, which feeds the material into the gun. I'll explain that in a minute. This pushes out, spring. I'm not gonna pull this all the way out because it's already stuck. And it is a brand new gun, like I said, but there is an astronomical amount of oil in this gun. I don't know if you can see that in there, but not good. So you would really have to buy this gun. You would really, really have to clean it extremely well. Because if not, your parts are gonna come out like crap. Because oil and paint does not mix. <clears throat> so we're gonna put that all the way in, all the way till it's tight. What that does, it prevents movement on the needle, meaning there's nothing will move on this thing. When you pull this piece back, what it ends up doing is allows the needle to come back more. And that's what allows the paint to shoot through the tip. This is a 1.4 tip, which means the tip is meant for spraying paints, clear coats, activator, um, amongst other things. Like I said, this rubber seal will move, which is obviously not good, and it prevents a perfect seal. So you have to be very careful when you put this thing back together because it's not, it's not a friendly gun in my opinion. It's not a good gun for beginners. It's not a good gun for a person who's been doing this forever. In reality, it's just not a good gun, period. And you'll have more issues with this 
than than um, anything else. So I definitely recommend would say. And the thing about it is you don't need to pay more money for this gun because it has this piece. You don't need it. Like I said, it's just the purple guns, they'll sell it in a kit for $25 or $27. They'll sell it without a kit for um, like $15 for this gun by itself. So we'll put everything back together. Close this off. Fan. So now this guy right here is the one that's a little bit more expensive. I mean, in reality, yes, without the regulator, it's a more expensive gun. We're going to take this guy apart real quick. Put this on. Take this off. So you see the difference between both guns? This gun does not have any rubber seals. It doesn't have any plastic seals which automatically makes it, in my opinion, a way better gun. This piece comes off, single piece. The needle also, you'll be able to tell the difference is that the needle on that one didn't want to come out. This guy, because it's a very inexpensive gun, this guy right here comes out a lot easier, smoother, and this is a 1.4 tip, same thing. Put it back in, put the back in with the spring, make sure the spring is in there. Boom. This guy right here. Now the only bad thing about this gun is when you're spraying activator, the activator will actually start to melt this paint. So this green paint that's on the gun itself, it ends up falling off. And what it does, it creates blockage in the gun itself. So the two things that you can do is just clean it off with the metal brush and inside here as well, because there's some paint in there too. Make sure you clean that off extremely well. And once you do that, the gun becomes something that's inexpensive in reality but a gun that can last you two three years without having to replace it and for 25 bucks you cannot beat that ever in reality so there you have it this gun right here was 24 dollars clean the inside of the gun from all the paint and you have a gun that's it'll spray for you for years. And once it gets dirty, clean it off with this guy right here and you're good. This gun right here, no dice. Expensive for what it is and it's a piece of sh shenanigans. All right, so now the, the second biggest thing when it comes to dipping itself is air pressure and how to spray the activator. And simply put, the way I've been doing this for years is I don't know how much air pressure I'm spraying so I do it based off the movement of the water if you spray too much air you're gonna move the film which gives you a horrible look you spread the film apart that's what she said and you now have a film that's faded in some areas and more colorful in other areas and that's the point of having it tight that's what she said so we're gonna use a better quality gun. So this bottom one tells how much material, how much spray, how much paint is coming through the bottom, through the actual spray. So if we close this all the way, there's nothing gonna come out. So this will shoot any liquid. I'm gonna put this gun away. You see how so if I close this all the way and I squeeze the trigger, nothing comes out. That means there's no movement in the needle. So when we come to activation, what you want to do is you want to turn this knob one and a half turns. And the way you do it is if you grab something and scratch it so you have a line, your starting point, and you're going to turn it one turn and a half. Then you grab this bottom piece and you tighten it up. That prevents it from you touching it, moving it. Um, it always keeps the same material pushing out. You can do a little bit more. I don't really recommend it, but a little bit more is okay. This top one represents how much fan. So you see how much material now is coming through? A lot more. And this guy right here is how much fan we're using. Excuse me. 
So, I'll show you real quick. When we have the fan all the way in, it focuses all the air in one spot. That's more of a touch up area, or if you're spraying an area that you need to get the paint specifically into one spot. When you do activation, you want your fan to be fully open so you see the difference. It's now spraying a full fan. Air pressure. Is about right there. 